Okay, I think we're live. Hi, friends. Um, thanks for hanging out with us. Um, a special thanks to Tessa for joining us. Um, I'm so excited. I know we've got um, some questions prepped um, and a few, few little trivia moments, but. Ooh, do for me. <laughs> yeah. Yes. See if I can recognize my own books. That's a really yes. good yeah. Maybe. Well, you're you're too hard. So. <laughs> Especially the early ones. Some of them, I don't know anymore. <laughs> It'll be I a good. I say thank you for having me here and for the taking on this amazing, what do you want to call it? Objective, readathon. <laughs> A really deep dive it's <laughs> just really amazing to me and like an honor and I'm, I'm pretty um i am odd i am odd odd but i am odd a u e d <laughs> by the dedication and honored so thank you well thank you for being here going back Mm -hmm. It has. Well, and I, I think Melissa, you'd read uh, *Wanton Dairy Maid* and *Stud Club*, but I, those two, I hadn't read yet. So Me that's either. My first time reading those two series, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. well, and I have a terrible memory, so I kind of forgot everything. <laughs> so it's good to go back. Super good to go back, and we. It was so fun being invited by Melissa and Jackie on this journey because we'd been yeah. doing a different read along, and we thought, hey. We both love Tessa Dare so much. We should do her book. So it's been great. Mm -hmm. Well, and this week we but read I'm fun. And you, Lady sorry, by you Midnight. Found all the good and bad about Oh, Lady by Midnight, Kate and Thorne. Oh, this is my favorite of okay, Beth. I'm really jealous because mine does not have a step back, and it's the only one I don't have. Aww. I I inherited this one from a dear friend, so. Yeah, sometimes the subsequent printings of books, they yeah. don't use the step back, so it's disappointing. Yeah, we're all a group that is hoping that we can convince the publishers to start including them in the digital copies, because mm. why yeah. wouldn't, why I mean, shouldn't it be in the ebook? So easy. Mm -hmm. You think. I think they should be gifts. Yes. Yeah. I, I love. I, I used to beg for one. ages to have a flip book step cover. I mean, step back. I mm. wanted it to be like you went like this, and then like action happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would they be so great. There's a gal on Instagram as as Esme, and she for a while was like using apps to animate the step back. So like there'd be like a caress Ooh. or something. I was like, this is. This is the Lord's work right here. This is the way <laughs> Have you seen the TikTok filter now that animates the face on the covers and they oh. like blink and smile and it's really oh. freaky and I, oh, I don't no. think I like it. <laughs> no. I'm like that's kind of cursed. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't recommend. I, I saw that with like the historical people and stuff, the portraits, and it just it seemed sort of weird to me. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah, Absolutely. That. <laughs> Someone commented about the holographic covers where like you see them move and mm -hmm. I'm a fan of that. Oh, like yes. 80. Yes, so they absolutely. Used to have, like in the 80s, those ones that had like a sticker, like a hologram, like a shiny rainbow sticker. It wasn't a hologram or a holograph, but. There was one that I've seen. I don't remember what book it was, but it's like a ghost romance. And so the hero only appears if you look at it on the right way. It's, and I was like, that's. Ooh, that's Smart. Genius. Smart marketing cool. right there. A newer romance that I saw on the library shelf actually did have a flip book effect, but it wasn't for the cover. It was with it was like a zoo. They owned a zoo, I think, and they had little animal footprints that as you riffled the pages, they like walked up Aww. and down. And that, I thought that cute. was pretty darling. <laughs> so it can happen. There we go. Can Do you have a favorite of your step backs, Tessa? Oh. I think, without looking at them, well, I have all my books behind me, so I'll probably hey. have to grab things. Um, I think my favorite is from What Has Got Ties On. I love this step back so much. It's so beautiful. The cover is beautiful, too, but mm -hmm. I, it's just like the kind of 
Like I would, I, I would have that poster hanging in my room. And I actually do have a, a big poster size of this that they made for an event, and then I got to bring it home with me. And um, I would just, you know, I used to have it when I had a dedicated office outside my house. I had it like hanging there, and it was very like lickable and inspiring. Mm. But <laughs> That's a good one. So yeah, I really love that that particular step back. The colors are just all my favorite colors. So good. How about you guys? I know you haven't gotten to that mm -hmm. one yet. If I was picking the early ones, well, most of my early ones didn't have step backs. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, the one for a week to be with me is really cool. It's really good, yeah. Oh, it is. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Even if he looks a little bit like our pets. Oops. I'm not oh, mad about it. Look, I, this is one with us. <gasps> no. Oh, no, it's okay. Oh, oh, there we go. Melissa's got it. it. Yes, that's oh, very good. So good. Very good. I'm looking well, at I'm mine. Like, as clothing moment that's happening, great. I just I love think the. I love this the, one's my I like favorite. When you can feel emotion between them. Yeah, that one's. Oh, I yeah, knew that was really your favorite. Best. <laughs> it's my hero book. <laughs> yeah. I'm really excited to get to that one too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someone, was, someone just did the fan art of uh, there was a, a cake scene. Mm -hmm. I know. I love that. That was so cool. Some people it's are beautiful like, fan amazing art. Amazing fan art. I think, you know, kind of all the Bridgerton fan art inspired more people mm -hmm. to start doing fan art. And I just, mm -hmm. I love, it's just so exciting. It just makes me yeah. feel like a real grown-up author. And like, it's <laughs> amazing. Like somebody took the time to do this and pay attention to even like little details of what they were wearing. Yeah. And it's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. It was great. I was like, how can I get that on something? Like, please. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. it, it just is really, it's a talent that I do not have. I am not a visual RC person at all, so. Me neither. <laughs> they put, make me put like graphics together for my job and I'm like, I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing. Thank you, Canva, for being great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I, you know, I said once to one of my colleagues, she was really good at making displays and, and, you know, tables, centerpieces and all these sorts of things. I was like, you're so good at this. I wish I was creative. And she looked at me and she said, you write books. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> She's a very different kind. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, I work at a library too now and I always prop out the books that I like. Yeah. And the, display, yeah. the secret well, romance you reader. Do. You know, if you know it's a good book, you want to put it out there. Oh, I mean, like I'm flattering myself there. If you know it's a good book, I mean, there are other good books, right. but oh. I appreciate that. Yes. You sing them out. It mm -hmm. should be a book that you recommend. Absolutely. What's the point? All right. Um, I see a bunch of names in the chat. I just want to say hi, everybody. Thanks for being wow. here. <laughs> well, I can't really see the chat, so I don't know. Um, so anyway, just hi, everybody. Yeah, hi. we'll try to read the questions as they come up. And if anybody does have extra questions, you can throw them in there. And we'll oh, ask I'm so just discovered that I can show things, maybe. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Magic. She okay, I'll be found sure about it. that now. I think I had a, a weird ghost like lenticular cover that I found at half price books once mm. when I was like step back hunting and I took a video of it. It's I could find Ashley, it somewhere. Ashley, thank you for changing the shelves at bookstores and you know face them out all the time. I appreciate that. We all mm -hmm. appreciate that. Also, yeah. if you go into the store and the twenty five percent off sticker is straight over the hero's face or something like that. And you kind of like carefully peel it off and move mm -hmm. it to another part of the <laughs> that, that, oh nobody's Who would put it there? You know, Oops. they just have, I don't know if they have a machine or a gun. They don't think about it. It goes in the same place. It's like on pow, pow, pow. pow. You know, exactly. <laughs> so I work at a bookstore and, and we put them on there. there. Wait, you put them on their faces? No, but like I work at an indie store, and so when we have sign stickers, I try to strategically place them so that they're not blocking anything. Yes, mm -hmm. right. I am considerate. <laughs> yes, because you. you are kind yes. and great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's very. Uh, that is that is very appreciated. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We feel the same way about library stickers too. Like some of the, they put the barcode right over. And yes. Like, what are you doing? Like, oh. <laughs> it's no right good. Now. It has to be in a standard place. So. And then unfortunately you can't really, you know, there's Target stickers go in one place and then the Walmart barcodes go uh, in another place. Yeah. So it's not like they can really like plan what goes where very well. And then, you know, by the time the book comes out, it might've, they might have changed where they stick things yeah. anyway. So mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you just, you just have to hope for the best. Precisely. But if I do see those on my friend's books, I move to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be like, what are you doing? I wrote this book. Uh, see? <laughs> no, they don't care. No, nah, they don't care at all. <laughs> I feel like I definitely heard this somewhere, but like if you do anything with confidence, particularly if you have a clipboard, I feel like clipboards help with this. They or, don't, a or a lanyard of yeah. any kind. This is <laughs> something secret. Official. Wow. Oh. Carry a clipboard. I feel like it definitely helps. You know. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, I. Uh, <laughs> But I understand there's like lots of things behind that. So like that I am unaware of as a consumer, but every once in a while. Oh, the spines of the series? Yeah. Like oh, when they, yeah. they don't line up. Oh no. Yeah, or right. and this is like a niche, but the Wallflower series by Lisa Kleypas, mm -hmm. all of the spines and covers of spring, summer, and winter are the same. Or no, spring winter and autumn are the same, but Secrets of a Summer Night has a different cover and a different spine. And I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> I can't, I can't remember where did that come out in the, in the series? Like, was that, mm -hmm. do you know whether it was book one, two, whatever? Uh, mm -hmm. Which book Maybe. was that out of the four? Was it the last one or I was it? Secrets is the first, book either it's secrets of a summer night or autumn is the first book right well it probably would be summer i think summer is first yeah that makes yeah. sense so yeah i think in that case um it may just be that the, that one did really well or it didn't do as well yeah. as it did, and they mm. just wanted to give it a bigger splashier look and and um to get more attention or to yeah it's the there's so much that goes on with it and the um the retailers actually have a very good uh, amount of, what do you want to call it? Cloud persuasion, influence, yeah. that's my word, influence on what covers look like. Because mm. if they won't take it or they don't like it at Walmart. Then I've heard Walmart's really strict about yeah. what they will and won't take. Yeah, they've gotten a little better, but I, I, I think, you know, at, at one point it was like no nipple or whatever, even if it was a nail, it, it just, <laughs> it was very, it was, it was quite specific. I was like, wow, that's a lot them. of books that no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I mean, well, obviously I don't have that rule anymore, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thank but, Yeah, I, I think everybody just kind of, at this point, most things will, will be okay, I mean, within yeah. reason. And Amazon has that too. They're actually yeah. more strict yeah. than a lot of places. It's really, if you want their advertising, that is. Mm. Or Facebook. If you want to make a Facebook ad with your cover on it, it better not have a woman's shoulder because, oh my God. Oh, wow. It can have a shirtless man, but it, it put two people next to each other where they might be kissing and suddenly it's too scandalous. That must be so frustrating when you're just trying yeah. to put an ad out and it blocks. <laughs> It is. <laughs> mm. But if you're I, if you're not careful and you break the rule like a couple of times or whatever, yeah. they can flag your account and just like shut it down. All these forces have so much control over it's stuff. Wild. I mean, um, they control everything now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what happened to like Violet Gaze Press recently? They had like almost had their whole Kindle account shut down. Really? I didn't yeah. hear about that, but I'm not surprised. I mean, things happen. And yeah, they accuse them of having like a multiple accounts. I multiple think. accounts are republished. And it was just like a form letter they emailed to the pub 
and they pulled all of their stuff. It was really bad. Oh, Linda says Secrets of Summer. Thank was you, Linda. Good. Okay, so that's thanks, Linda. Like Hi, Linda. <laughs> either it didn't take off as well as they wanted it to, or it took off really well, and they really wanted to make it like. So um, yeah. that's probably why the other three got a new, or the art director changed, or uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see. I have a friend who works in marketing and anytime I'm like, oh, like what? We may not have step backs anymore. She's like, it's all about the marketing and the advertising and blah, 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 Walmart. And I'm like, okay, I get, I get the <laughs> one depth behind it. But, I have too much yeah, power. but, I'm sorry. Right. oh man, I'm so sad. I think, I, I think step backs are gone for, for the future now. And it's so sad. So sad. I love. Are that. are they moving your books moving forward into that new paperback max the size max, where it's like between the mass market and the yeah. Here's another retailer thing like Walmart won't take the regular mass markets going forward. Really? So so they have to change. Everything's that gonna be mass max. <laughs> you can't sell it at Walmart. It's not even. Is that gonna happen with Ride? So. But are they gonna change the size with that one, or are they gonna do it afterwards? But good... no, they'll have to change the size of it unless they just don't want it published. Will the bride have a, it, it has one made, whether it was um, still her, I don't know. I wonder if it will be like the bombshell that's coming out in August that has like the back step back with the text on the back. Oh, maybe, maybe. I would, ex I would accept that it. in my heart. Yes. I'll be yeah. grumpily, <laughs> but I, I'm fine with that I just want French. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, I want it. Yeah, it, it's not my. Um, that one's not my favorite of the step back, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not bad. Okay. It's just not my favorite. I love the cover. So I shouldn't. Cute. I shouldn't. Um, I shouldn't like down. To, but what happened was like <laughs> you know, we couldn't decide on the shot for the for the cover, and so they we we picked one, and then they made it, and then it didn't look right. And so we went with another one for the cover, but then they were like, okay, but you have to use this one for the step back. Uh, uh, so like, we were like, oh. Well. Well. Don't tell. I put ROM in my diet. So, hey. I also am But we should go around and say what we're all sipping. And yes. I'm also drinking rum, but I've got a dark and stormy. Nice. Nice. I have an Arnold Palmer because I'm Ooh. going to watch the local sports team after our chat. The Bucks go Bucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like the thing, a little romance tumbler. This is, they're up three to two, right? The Bucks? Ooh. I think so. If they win tonight, they win. Yeah. It's a big deal. <laughs> but are they back in Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. So Which, they'll, they'll have to win in Phoenix if they are going to win. Right. Which they were struggling yeah, my with. Milwaukee, so we went oh, watching. that's awesome. My, my husband's a big basketball fan in general. So I, I live in Milwaukee. Yay. <laughs> Yay, Milwaukee. It's a great city. Cold. I think I remember earlier during the football season an exchange where we were like, you should cheer for the Packers. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Like I have a hierarchy. The pack the Packers are on it. Like mm -hmm. it's usually Rams and Colts are my, you know, my Indiana is my sort of home state. I moved around a lot in the Midwest, but Indiana is where I lived the longest. So I consider the Coles my home team. Oh, Iowa doesn't have a team anymore. Uh, and then, and then the Rams and um, other LA teams. Like, what else do we have over here? The Chargers, I guess. Um, and then Packers are probably next. That makes me happy. Oh Melissa, what are you drinking? White Claw Pineapple. Hey, yo. I think mango is the best uh, White Claw flavor, but pineapple yeah, is I also don't love it. Pineapple's okay. All right. <laughs> I can't even feel those. I think I'm either... I don't know. I, I think the drink is saying to me, them. you're too old for this. We're doing nothing for you. Or I don't know what it is. <laughs> I push back on that because my parents both really like, well, mostly my dad, very into White Claw. And it tastes good. Also, it's great as like a mixing ingredient for drinks because it has like enough flavor. There you um, go. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a proponent. It can be the little sparkle in your spritzer. There you go. There you go. That's a good idea. Vino Verde. I, that's really that good is. too. Interesting. Green. Does that mean it's green? I'm curious. I it's like a name. light, lighter, like kind of slightly fizzy, I oh. guess. They call it green. It doesn't look green in your glass. Like it's kind of like a buttery color I've had or like a really light yellow. I've gotten it from Trader Joe's. It's like a lighter alcohol wine. And it, I think it's young, which is why they call it I love green. the summer shandy. Mm. That's a very Wisconsin. Kind of mm -hmm. um, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, the grapes are green. That makes sense. I'm okay. Okay. Someone's Wikipedia says it's. I think it's just because everybody is like, oh, rose is over. Let's pick a new color. Verde. <laughs> it is Portuguese. Next will be I'm... azul. Yeah. Ooh. That'll be scary. <laughs> I don't know if I can drink no. blue. <laughs> Me, I couldn't remember the name of the. There's a show that you watch in Portuguese that you mm -hmm. live stream frequently. What is the show that you watch? I forgot. Oh, Big Brother. Big Brother Brazil. That's oh, okay. That's pretty much all I watched. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It's like a huge phenomenon there. Like Forty million people watch it like every night. It's on every single night, and wow. um, just you know, the people who are on it were just um, they become like insta famous. But oh. it's, it's so it's wild. It's really really wild. Experience. That's awesome. Course, everybody's I talking about it. On Big Brother and Forever. So it was a really good way to like learn some Portuguese and every day <laughs> and then chat with other people about it. Help me learn to read and write some more. So tequila and pineapple white cloth sounds really good. That sounds very good. Mm hmm. I got that alcohol up. Yeah. <laughs> mm hmm. My husband um, and I were like, this is like eating celery. It burns more calories than it gives you. It's like, I feel like yeah. it's taking me more effort to, to drink it. Yeah. Drink this that I'm getting, but maybe I'm we're just it. like. <laughs> so, I feel like my go to, and I usually um, mix it with White Claw, is. I like to use frozen mango chunks instead of ice cubes. Mm. It's cool. It adds a little bit of flavor and it doesn't water it down. And I usually go like a little bit of like a cheap Carlo Rossi sangria, cause you know, and then a little white claw. And then like, if you have rum, my dad got a, huh. um, like a peach whiskey recently. And that was good. Mm. Just, like, very tropical. Amazing. It's very, mm. good. very refreshing. I'm sure too. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait, who said something about quinoa? Oh, quinoa. Gosh, you like quinoa? <laughs> if you're drinking quinoa, a quinoa colada, that would be like the... Is that like the water that you rinse the quinoa with and then you forbid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's no. like barley water in the Regency. I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> uh, Nobody said they're drinking ratafia or, or Madeira. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder which of those I would actually like, and if there is one that I would think tastes good. I might. I'll, the only thing I might have around, is, uh, I think that was the dog. Sorry, is sherry, no, but I don't really like it. I think I tried port once, and I was like, mm -hmm. not for me. <laughs> yeah, my husband likes port, but it's, I'm I like a really dry like red wine, and port is just. I can have a little bit, but it's really sweet. And if I drink a lot of really mm -hmm. sweet, I get a headache. And oh, oh, okay. Oh, you're. Oh, I see. <laughs> that makes that sense. Why well, I didn't know. Hmm. Okay, I'm following I, uh, you. Yeah, the the I've been to historical themed events where we had little tastings of different alcohols, though. So that Ooh. was really fun. You know, some of the uh, the things that you read about. Mm -hmm. And you know what, actually, um, a lot of, like, you know how, like, shrubs got really popular last oh, year? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was something they had then. Sort of a, That makes know, sense. That vinegary, like. Fruity, vinegary thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of historical events, Regency, there was a question. We've got a number of questions. But one that I had was there were several times when I was read when we were doing our readathon. And I would stumble into like 
almost direct quotes from 2005 Pride and Prejudice because I am a 2005 person. Um, and I was like, is this intentional? Ooh, or, or okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Because I like, <laughs> but I was like, am I just reading so much into this well, right now? Well, some should be in the actual book as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, like totally. Because that's the reason I write historical romance. Jane Austen, and then specifically that movie, because after I watched that, oh look, so I'm answering beautiful. this question right now. Um, after I watched the 2005 Pride and Prejudice, I um, discovered that like there was a world of online fandom. I don't know how I missed that whole yeah. thing. Well, I had been working, and <laughs> I was still working, but I was at home raising kids. And so I had a little more time to explore the world of the internet fandom. And I started writing fan fiction for Pride and Prejudice, specifically wow. Jane Austen, they call it Jaff, J -A -F -F. And mm -hmm. so I, um, that's how I got into writing Regency romance in the first place. And then I just kind of transitioned from that to, to um, making up my own characters. But yeah, there's a lot of nods, especially in my earlier books. But I mean, mm -hmm. In a lot of them, there's little nods to Austin. Okay, I definitely, there were no times where I was like, this feels like there's something about like Diana into town, if her health would have allowed it. And I just heard Judy oh, yeah. get. Oh, yeah. Only oh, her yeah. Health. Well, Miss Highwood is totally Mrs. Bennett in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yes. Daughter Samaria. Oh. I even, look, I have my shirt. This is Obstinate Headstrong Girl. <laughs> Love it. I love that very much. <laughs> well, I think there were a number of us who were really struggling with Mrs. Uh, Highwood in this book because she's like, oh, she's so difficult. And like, you can understand her, but ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have one of those. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's she's a piece of work. But you know, she she also is kind of driven there by what she feels yeah. is necessity. So, mm -hmm. um, although by that point, you're gonna run on like that yeah. book, you probably remember way better than me because I haven't looked at it in a long time. But mm -hmm. you know, by that point, Minerva had already married Colin, so like mm -hmm. you would think she doesn't really need to not worry so much about money. But you you know. I'm not going to be able to tell her that. But I think if she finally kind of gets a little bit of a, I don't know if I want to say, I don't know if redemption is the right word, but a little bit of a, a little bit of an arc when it comes to Charlotte, by the time it comes to Charlotte's book. So. Mm -hmm. She hasn't I'm changed, but like, I think her daughters come to understand her a little bit more. I forgot who it was in our discussions that they compared her to like a Mrs. Bennett without the Mr. Bennett to kind of balance her <laughs> out and kind right, of level right. her off. And I that really spoke to me and I see that in her. And without the Mr. Bennett to be like a sort of security. Mm -hmm. How to make fat yeah. Hey, I mean, yes. <laughs> have opinions, but each other. There's room for all Darcy's. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's true. In my heart, though. <laughs> I just think that, like, and this is, I think you're right, and that there's room for everyone, but I do think that, like, few films have captured the the tension, like, the delicious sexual tension of mm -hmm. the dance sequence where everyone disappears and the first proposal uh, in the rain. I'm just like, mm -hmm. show me yeah, there. Amazing Jeez. scenes. Amazing, both of them. Yeah. But, that movie, as opposed to the mini from 1995, it was so beautiful. It was so lush, like the production design and the cinematography and the, and the score, just everything was so gorgeous. And I think that that's something that the 95 lacks in a way. It's very, a lot of the lighting is very bright, harsh sunlight. The hand flex, that's right. And so there's something just like very immersive about it. And, um, and, but yeah, they, and they took the characters and they did something different with them, which I think is, you know, mm -hmm. like a different Darcy, slightly, yeah. you know, socially awkward. And that's why he's, instead of just obnoxious. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I feel like the hero of yours that feels most similar to Darcy is Spencer, which mm -hmm. until this book, I think this book dethroned as like my favorite from the Tessa backlist, but for so long it was one dance because the two of them are so compelling together, Spencer oh, and- Oh, that's really like sweet of you to say. Mm -hmm. Spencer's terrible. Like I, <laughs> the poster books I actually just went back and, and looked at because they're gonna be reissued by the original publisher mm -hmm. and um, early next year. But I asked if I could go through them first and look for any like, you know, light edits of, Remember 12 years ago, and there's things yep. in there that you just don't say now. And, um, or that I probably shouldn't have said then, but you know, it's like kind of hindsight's 2020. Yeah, exactly. Making sure consent is extra clear and, and just looking for any potential. Um, so they're not big changes, but yeah, there were a few points where Spencer's like, I, thought that I won't be responsible for my actions. I was like, mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're not that <laughs> You're responsible, Spencer. You're responsible for your actions. <laughs> I <laughs> did a little great sex scene. It did. We started on the vanity. Oh my God. Oh, so, yeah. It's like Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it really like struck home our group name, which is What Do what They Bang? They do. They do. <laughs> I was wondering, like, why why would you ask that question? Is it my book? Then, yes. No. They, dang. <laughs> I feel like the thought process behind it is, like, if they don't, we're out of here. Mm -hmm. like, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's like you're guaranteed in a Tessa Dare book. Happy ending. ending. Yes. Actually, the, well, the Christmas the story I put out last year is the first, first and only thing I've actually released, and it was a short story, but where there was not actually any banging. Wait, which one was that? Is that the... It's called When She Was Naughty. Oh. Hmm. But not too naughty, like, clearly. It takes place in an incredibly short period that of time. So, yeah. And it's only, it's like 12,000 words long or something. It's really a short, it's a short story. So a long, short story. One, um, I remember when we were reading last thing about uh, One Dance with the Duke, um, I remember a number of us um, kind of read Spencer as neurodiverse, just in some of the mm -hmm. like noise sensitivity and like the way that he interacted with people. And that we, I know a number of us are wondering like, was that intentional or maybe just kind of something that happened through the writing process? Oh, for sure. Cause okay, yeah. um, you know, I wrote him as having social anxiety. That's what I, how I saw it. And because oh. I do, <laughs> so I, that's the way he feels in a in a crowded ballroom is how I feel at a party, like a crowded party. I'm good for a little bit, and then suddenly, like, no, I have to leave. And um, so, so yeah, um, that's why I wrote him. <laughs> yeah, speaking Wait, of Darcy inspired, so that the when she was not, he was inspired by Mark Darcy, Bridget Jones. Oh. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, you know, the scene where he's wearing that ugly Christmas sweater. It's kind of like mm -hmm. inspir inspiration. So, um, so yeah, I, I definitely wrote Spencer as having social anxiety. And then I went back and I wrote a heroine with social anxiety. Oh, years. and it's my like, favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll have to wait for that one, I guess, a couple more oh. books ahead of you. That's so good. Okay. Um, one. Oh, oh yeah. I think this written. one. <laughs> there was a moment in I think it's a night to surrender where Colin hops up on a barrel and he's like, "Look at me! Now look at yourselves! Now look at me!" <laughs> I wonder if anybody gets that now, but yeah, at the time, so good. It made sense. And I figure, you know, in the future, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it'll just go over people's heads. You know, mm -hmm. it won't. And won't land as the same joke, but it will. It was so it was good. Funny. It was so perfect. <laughs> I have to keep myself entertained. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not entertained, like, how can I help anybody else will be? So that's something. Can you I don't tease know. any for us in the bride bet? If you can't, that's fine. But oh, we'll yeah. Just... Um, let me think about. So there's some things in there, and I'm not sure if they're going to make the final. 
One of my favorite is about resting Duke face. Yes! <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, that's so good. I love that. <laughs> um, we have to mention that one of our. Then it'll make it in a different book, so don't tell when it comes. Out. Oh, okay. That's okay. <laughs> we'll keep the secret. Wait, Ron oh, yes. bang counts. So we've been keeping track of how many times they either bang or have orgasms in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I think specifically um, a climax has to be reached for it to count. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's yes. some intense kissing that we kind of like. I think we'll get like a 0. 0.5 if it's like honorable mention. Mm -hmm. Right. Bang, so, right. Biggest interruptus. In the lead, <laughs> yeah, we have yeah, yeah. Goddess Hunt with 10. That's a wild. Uh, That's really surprising to me. Um, and Nothing then, has topped that since. Mm -mm, I think no. a two have bounced eight. That was don't even bang so like well i guess it just goes by in a chapter or two so it's yeah good. and then the least one is three nights of the scoundrel but that also had a great sex scene on the piano so i mean that's yes. great and like i feel like because of the friends to lovers angst it like made sense for them you know yeah they don't they get a little bit of a late start in that one i guess mm -hmm. there's kind yeah. of a lot of plot in that one when i was reading those i was like whoa like reading a different author it was really a strange <laughs> experience it's like i used to write like this was complicated with the mystery and yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know the thing is i wrote books or those first three books and then got was almost all the all the way through writing twice tempted before my very first book was published Oh, so really? I, really I didn't know that. Without ever knowing what it was like to have one published. And it was really, um, you know, there's things that I kind of learned, you know, along the way that I probably, and they, they were all, they were all contracted. It wasn't like books that I just kind of mm -hmm. threw under my bed. It was right. because they were doing these back-to-back -back trilogies. So like I sold mm -hmm. my first oh. book in 2007 and then it wasn't published until 2009. And then, so I had wow. those three in 2009 and then another three in 2010, the Stug Club books. So I, um, so they were all being published. Um, and, but I had written them all before I had ever had like a review of a book or anything. Wow. And it was, it was, um, I mean, there's some good things about that and some mm -hmm. things I probably learned. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But you know, I always learn idea. and grow and change. And... Yeah. Speaking of Twice Tempted, I know it, a number of us felt like uh, Thorn in uh, Lady by Midnight had some like archetypal echoes of of Reese in Twice Tempted. You know, yeah. I, love to write. Um, I guess there's kind of three kind of heroes there, right? There's like this, the rake, charming, charming rake kind. Holly. And then there's the, just the autocratic uh duke you know powerful kinds and then there's the um the tortured kinds so they definitely both were in the like tortured category it's my favorite <laughs> I, I mean i love writing all three which is why i kind of like yeah go back and forth Ooh, speaking of writing all three kind of back to back was there anything that what i feel like i learned um, I think I learned, I have learned since then, um, a lot about characterization and how to, how to make a character sympathetic to the reader and how mm. to, um, get the reader on the character's side earlier on, especially heroines. Um, mm. yeah. I think when I went to, when I started Spindle Cove was when I first started writing the kind of heroines that I've written ever since, basically, mm -hmm. the kind of oddball girls. Um, and, uh, and girls with like these interesting interests and professions and things that they were aspiring to do. And the antagonist was not 
necessarily the hero, but like the societal pressure against them and um, not necessarily a big mystery plot or anything like that. But that's, I think that's really when I hit my stride is when I really when I wanted to write and what I wrote well. And uh, so I think I was kind of figuring that out. I think at first I was kind of, kind of writing um, more aspirational heroines, like yeah. who had qualities that I kind of wanted to have, but then I started writing ones that I actually had the quality where I could, you know, who were more realistic qualities and me. And then mm -hmm. when people started to respond to them, it was really um, validating and wonderful, especially I would say Minerva in mm -hmm. Week to be Wicked. I think yeah. she was my first true, like, total misfit heroine. And um, she's weird. And I was wondered, I felt like when I wrote this book, I was like, this book is good. Like, this, I almost never feel that about any of my books. But like this one, I was like, I'm really proud of this one. And if people don't like it, it's gonna kill me. That's how it mm -hmm. felt. I was, I was, if people don't love her or love them together, it's just gonna feel like a rejection of my whole life. Um, <laughs> but then they did, and they still yeah. do, and it's still one of my most popular books. And so I think the fact that there's so much of myself in there, and um, in both of them, it was like I found a way to have the two halves of my brain talk to each other. And um, so I, I feel like that's where I, what I learned was from the early books was just kind of, not that I'm not proud of them, but it just was a, a process of finding out what felt authentic to me. And it was not like I wasn't authentic in writing them. I just think it was um, more of writing what I thought I ought to write more, more than what I really um, needed to write. I don't know. Um, so there you go. So the more I like let all my own insecurities and weirdness into my books, the more it seemed that people respond to them. And that was really, um, it was validating because it felt scary to do it in the first place. Yeah. I'm a charming rig in myself, so it's actually, I am too. <laughs> we love that, Colin, we do. Where did you get the idea for his um, sleeping problem from where he has to sleep oh. with somebody? Oh, because it's the best thing in the world where they have to share a bed. I mean, it's so yeah. true. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Yeah, pretty much. Sometimes these those. things reverse engineer themselves. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, you know, it's like, okay, what are things for a road trip that are, this book is like so true. It's, it's like all the road trips. So trophy. trophy. There's, yes. There's very few scenes in here that have any true originality. I mean, they're all like <laughs> romancing the stone or this is like, you know, it just, um, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of, <laughs> inspiration from just all the all the standard road trip or enemies to lovers tropes and mm -hmm. and there's only one bad is one of them and of course but i find it a little hard to believe that on this whole trip there would end up in places over and over again with only one bed so <laughs> there's a good way to make sure you can Ooh, another we all had a question for a week to be wicked the um, scientist that Minerva writes to, Sir Alistair Kent, we were like, is he canonically bi? Like he's kind of into her when he thinks that she's a dude, but also mm -hmm. he like meets with a woman and she's like, okay, yeah. So I was think a I just left it purposely yeah. ambiguous so people could read into it what they want, but sure, let's make him canonically bi. Yes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if Dumbledore can suddenly be gay, then. <laughs> yes. Sir Alistair can suddenly be by. Check. <laughs> Why not? Oh, let's see. Um, Ooh, sorry. <laughs> we also have questions about um, the grammar C's because we like uh, them so much. Oh, good. I'm any so glad. Chance, is there any chance we'll see, see them again? Well, I, I mean, when I wrote that book, for I have this. I mean, I did think, okay, well, here's a family that, you know, maybe I could write about these people someday. Um, but I also just wanted to develop a family that Kate could be a part of realistically, you know, because she would be coming from such a, 
disparate place. Yes, exactly. Um, she needed to have, and if she was going to have that family love that she was yearning for, she needed to have an unconventional family to be becoming part of. So that's mm -hmm. part of why the grandma suits are so um, unusual and different. But they were fun to make, to make up. And I mean, I haven't like said no. I mean, I just, <laughs> it just, I've always been busy with other things and um, had other ideas, but they were definitely um, interesting to write. And uh, I don't know, I, um, no. Never say never. Never say never. I never say never about anyone. Oh, do you want to know? I mean, some people may know this because it's not exactly a secret, but the backstory for um, Any Duchess Will Do, which is the next book that I guess you'll read. So if anybody hasn't read that one yet, it's not going to have that many spoilers. I, I won't be telling you spoilers. No. But the hero for that book is in A Week to Be Wicked. He's in this right? one. Yeah. He's absolutely horrible. He's disgusting. Yes. He um, I had written most of Any Duchess Will Do with an entirely different hero. And his name was still Griff. Aw, look at this little sweet. <laughs> Kid bombing. I, <laughs> um, and I, it wasn't working. It was, this, mm -hmm. this is me. I will often like throw out a whole book and kind of start again. Um, Hello, I haven't published a book in two years. Um, <laughs> so, well, you, um, you, play, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah usually I get it done in event within the right time. But um, so, so I had Anita just with Zoo, and the hero was had was named Griff, but he was um, just a different guy with a totally different personality, and um, and it just wasn't really that good and when I when I um you know talked with my editor about it I mean I think yeah it was like almost entirely written it was totally different like there was a princess like it was just so different so completely different 2020 doesn't count as a year thank you I agree um so I was like okay I have to change something and at the same time you know this book was was out probably a uh, lady by midnight hadn't come out yet i'm gonna guess and um somebody said you ever gonna write a book about halford um colin's friend and i was like oh he's disgusting <laughs> why would you ever want to read about that guy that is so gross like how could you possibly redeem him and then it was like oh how could i possibly redeem him maybe that could be really interesting. And, you know, I knew that something truly, truly transformative and life altering would have to take place in order for him to be in a position where he was um, ready to be a hero. Because I don't like taking a, a guy who is still in the throes of his nasty using women ish ways. Um, to uh, redeem, I prefer to have them already have turned the road to redemption and just, you know, not quite know how to get there. So, um, sorry for the dog in the background. It's fine. Now. Hey, everybody's busted in. <laughs> if anybody follows me on Twitter, you know we. Yeah, we love, love him. <laughs> he's, um, he's our rescue puppy that we adopted mm -hmm. three months ago, and he's. A lot. But Someone asked how you landed on the name Loki, and I was curious. Huh? Someone asked how you landed on the name Loki. Oh, my daughter um, fixed it. She wanted something I, I sort of mythological. So. See, I was guessing Tom Hiddleston fan. Also, that's cool, too. Yeah, it's very appropriate. He is dog of mischief. Okay, I am going to go yell at a child to take him somewhere else. <laughs> That's okay. I'm being asked about playing Animal Crossing. I'm like, just go do it. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, what do we want to cover with... Um, oh, oh, it's go. back already. Great. Okay. <laughs> 
I am very happy to hear about Sir Alistair Kent. I hope that he is doing well. He's doing great in my mind. <laughs> yeah, he's doing that science thing. He's uh, having a good time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's Ooh. see. I think he's like going to orgies with Benedict Bridgerton or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there they we go. Friends. They would be great friends. That would be a great thing to write into the TV yes. show. Like it's yes. a Easter egg. <laughs> yes. You know, I, I got to be honest. I didn't love Benedict's book. Like it was a good book, but it wasn't like my standout favorite of the series. But based on his characterization in the show, I'm like, Hello, I would like more, please. I love that they're doing different things with it. And yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I know some people are like really invested in wanting to see it be very much like the books. And I understand that, but the same, but I personally am enjoying not exactly knowing what's gonna happen. So mm -hmm. um, as long as they confirmed the couples will be the same in the books. And so I feel like knowing that I'm like, okay, yeah, do what you will. Hmm. Like I wanna. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna see. It's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. Go with the first. Yeah. Uh, I have been on a on a campaign to get Anthony Bridgerton to wear to the baby goat. <gasps> I just want a picture of Johnny Bailey holding the baby goat. He can be gotta like, happen. He would like. He has that energy. Exactly. When he would. The girl would love him and follow him <laughs> home. I mean, it would, you know, he's a lovely person. Right? If Bram can take home a little baby lamb, come exactly. on now. <laughs> oh my God. I was so upset. I forgot about dinner. And then we reread that book and I was like, oh, how could I? Aww, I don't, like before I got into goats, I guess I was, you know, I even killed a goat in Surrender of a Siren. They ate one. Oh, oh that's right. right. Oh man! But shocking. It was a romantic offering. <laughs> it, was like a it was. It was. It really was. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Ooh, so, I yeah, know. Before I was quite as mad for goats, but um, I adopted guinea pigs this pandemic, so my Aww. my kids really wanted a pet, and we went. We adopted two. Um, gal pal guinea pigs. So I was like, I'm my own Tessa Dare heroine now with my yes. little cute bundles <laughs> that can like go in my hoodie pocket and hang out. And they just chill. Is it me being more aware of them, or are guinea pigs kind of having a moment? Like I maybe I see way more people talking about them, but maybe it's just me being aware of it. Mm -hmm. I feel that way too. I was like, I never knew they were like everywhere. Now I can't escape. <laughs> My kid's trying to make oh, it like a guinea pig escape. TikTok. No, they're so, they're a lot of fun. Mama. I wouldn't let one in my house because it would just be a race to see which other animal here would kill it first. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. <laughs> Not a good idea. There was a period in which I was convinced we needed to get bunnies because my friend had them and they're very cute. I didn't think about upkeep, of course, which would be <laughs> not a fun time. I was like, bunnies are cute. We should get some. And then I, my parents were like, you realize we have a cat who mm -hmm. actively mm -hmm. hunts things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see how that doesn't work. And I was like, mm. Right, right. I don't, I mean, our dog is not really allowed to mingle with the cats yet. Because right? I don't trust him yet. He's not well enough trained. And one of our cats antagonizes him. Oh no! The screen, the screen porch window. So I'm like, no. mm, we're gonna we're gonna drama for a while. It'll Eventually, get better. I think they'll all coexist, all right. But there's that the one. I think the two girls would just like kind of live and let live, and, and but Jack is the naughty one. Oh no! Oh no! He knows he has the power right now. He's like, nobody yes. not, somebody came in as more naughty than me. What happened? No, no. <laughs> Will not stand. No. <laughs> That's cute. I know another question we had is if there was any particular inspiration for the Spindle Cove series. Besides like, like I, what you talked about, about like, I'm going to write heroes that are more 
what I want to see as heroines, you know, or heroines. Mm -hmm. Um, well, here, another true story. I, I shouldn't like tell all of these things, but, um, cause they'll make people realize that like, <laughs> like I'm just making everything up as I go. Um, please don't ask me about my writing process. <laughs> There's no good answer to that. Um, so I, uh, had a completely, that was when I moved to Avon, right? Yeah. House. So, you know, I was pitching something to a new editor who is now still my editor, Tessa Woodward. Love her so much, even though we have the same name and it's very confusing. But I have stopped getting quite as many emails meant for her. Um, <laughs> I, um, so I had its proposal written for a completely different series and oh. just completely different. And it was more hero focused and more plot driven mm -hmm. and it's probably more like the stud club in sort of tone and um and everything and i had chapters you know and synopses and everything so we sent them to tessa and you know it's kind of a thing where we kind of knew that that she would want me it's just a matter of um oh at least i flattered myself to think so um <laughs> just a matter of what i was gonna write and um she was like, mm, I, really, I don't really think this, this is the same yet. Like, <laughs> oh, man. so we were on this phone call with my agent and I was like, well, I have this other idea, which is like, just a town that's like full of women. And then it's comes from Jane Eyre, uh, not Jane Eyre, Jane Austen, the militia comes to Meriton, right? Like oh. um, and it's just some guys like come to town and just upend everything. And she's like, I love it. Yes. Three books. Like <laughs> seriously, that was all I said. I love and, that. <laughs> um, she's like, let's do that. And then I had to like make up everything for me. That's so and cool. that proposal is the one that was I had all done was never gone anywhere. <laughs> Every once in a while I, I mentioned it to her, I was like, She's smarter than me. She knows. She knows. That's why I love her so much. Julia, you're smarter than me. I didn't see that. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's impressive, it's, but it is what happened. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's like, hmm, well, I want to write for her. And if she thinks this idea is bad, Think of another one. <laughs> and it was, and I was like, it would be a little lighter and funnier. And mm -hmm. she's like, I love that. So <laughs> Splendoka was born and she was absolutely 100% very good. It's a wonderful place. I wish I could go there myself. <laughs> I'm so excited we're going to kind of get to go back soon with yeah. Sally's. Right? Oh, mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's fan service galore. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Appreciate all that. <laughs> but not it's so many. Like I, I couldn't work them all in. It's the four major ones, but yeah, they're they're there. Hmm. Mentions that's, of some of the others. I remember before we started reading, I think it was Kate Claiborne had tweeted something and was like it was about Goddess of the Hunt. She's like, this is my favorite Tessa Dare book. It's so amazing and underrated and everyone needs to read it. And I was like, okay, now I'm very excited. Yeah. To read it. But I was wondering if there's like anything like, like specific about that one, like your first book. I mean, I guess besides being like your debut. You must have counted like, all the banging. That's probably <laughs> it, honestly. <laughs> Be like, that's why Kate likes it. Like, I actually took yeah. some banging out of that book. <laughs> 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 It was my first romance novel I ever wrote, you know? And so it was it's like, so we I'm writing a romance, you know? And it just was like this kind of id mm. vomit, you know? Like, yeah. you know, I wasn't thinking about what anyone else would think or what, um, you know, what readers would expect or anything like that. I mean, I was hoping to sell it, but I, I in general, was just kind of like, wardrobe banging. Then I'm a bang in a wardrobe. It's the leading, though. It's like the... Yeah. 
It's the foreplay. Hedging, as it were. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, yeah, I, um, I um, was definitely, was, uh, it, it was, it was, it was, there was something about it where I didn't know what I was going to, I didn't know what I was doing, but at the same time, that was kind of a blessing because I didn't know. I didn't know what not to do, or I didn't know that a lot of the things I was writing were like completely cliched. I just, I you thought what I you made liked. up them. <laughs> it's like, how dumb was I? But it's just. Well, I know Katie um, Robert, I've heard her talk quite a bit about like how she has like an id list of like, these are all the things that I like and mm -hmm. I will work these in. Not because like, this isn't for other people. This is for right. me. And I do love that because there's a certain kind of like gleeful, like, ooh, well then I can do this. And like, what will happen mm -hmm. if this, you know? And that's one where, you know, Lisa, Lucy was kind of aspirational, but she was still very imperfect. And she was just very brave and very sure of herself. And I think that's what I needed to write because it was like this huge leap to, to take. I'd like quit a job to write this book and um, a part-time job. But it was, it, we didn't have money. So it was very, and my husband actually totaled his car, not on purpose, but conveniently oh at the same time, um, was not injured. Nobody was injured. But then we just took that money that we got from, from the insurance company and bought a beater for $2,000 and used the rest of it to pay bills while I was writing this book. So I was so motivated to make this work. This has to pay off, right? And, um, but I didn't know what I was, I didn't know what not to do because nobody had told me all those lessons. So, um, I was just figuring it out as I went along and writing what entertained me and what amused me and what titillated me, I suppose. And, and, um, and then I rewrote it a lot of it, but you know, it was, it had a lot of problems the first draft of it, but. So yeah, it, I think that a lot of first books are that way. It's just kind of like this gleeful, like nobody dance while no one's watching sort of thing, you know? <laughs> and and um, dance like no one's watching, yeah. Write romance like no one's ever gonna care what's in it. Mm -hmm. and... Ooh, I like this one. It's just so, not the same after happen? you're used to people reading your books. You always feel them over your shoulder, which it's, you know, it's not, again, it's like there's some good things to that, and then there's some bad things. Do I picture celebrities I'm reading from here? Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm moderating my own. Um, do I picture celebrities? Sometimes, yes, and sometimes no. Sometimes one just kind of like comes to mind, and for sure, um, Jeremy and Goddess of the Hunt was Clive Owen at the time. I mean, he's gotten oh. older, but he was like, I was like really into Clive Owen. Super intense. Okay. Blue eyes. Okay. Yeah. I see that. Um, Great smile. You know, my husband and I had a joke at the time, like in every single movie, Clive Owen says, if you touch her, I will kill you. And I just, <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? I don't know. He says it in a couple of different movies, and at least at the time, they were like the ones that we had seen most recently. And so I was like, I love that. You know, that does that Jeremy energy. say it in the book? Touch me. Oh no, but you oh. know, it's just that sort that, of like vibe. Yeah. You know, he does have that, which is great. Mm. Sort of in that <laughs> Liam Neeson, like I have a set of special skills. Kind of, you know. <laughs> Oh man. Um, so yeah, that was one. I'm trying to think of any others that I might have had specific. What about for uh, Captain Logan? Oh, of course. Well, in my mind, he didn't necessarily look like him. But of course, when I was saying, when we were talking about the cover, I was like, just make him look like, um, what's his face from Outlander? I was <laughs> That's a human. Oh, he's so hot. Yeah. 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 So um, yeah, of course he's so hot, and like you know, why wouldn't we want to evoke that image? Outlander was really big at the time, so. And I kind of described in that way. I don't think he really looked like that in my mind completely, but you know, it was like the marketing decision for the book. I was like, pick the guy that you can find that looks something like Jamie from Outlander. Is. Yes. <laughs> Like Sam Ewan posted a photo today and he's wearing like 
essentially like a bandana as an ascot tucked into a polo shirt with glasses and a cigarette, like a, a cigar, not a cigarette. How dare you? How dare you accost us with this on the weekend? Yeah, he's very, yeah. He's, he is a very good looking man. He is. Ugh. Very good looking man. So, so yep. Um, yes. The kind of stars of just like imagine. Worth um, it. Yeah, you know what? It's funny. I haven't watched the whole show because I've read all the books and I loved all the books and I felt so. When I started watching a show, it was like, it gave me this weird feeling because of having the books living in my head so much. I should go back and try to watch it again. It just kind of made me want to rewatch the books. I mean, read, read the books. So um, I uh, didn't watch it all. And then I think I felt afraid that it was going to mess with my love of the books for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, but then my husband watched it all. So uh -huh. then we went to Scotland a few years ago and we were like, oh, let's take some kind of tour, you know, out of the town, out of Edinburgh, so that we can see some other parts of Scotland while we're up there. And uh, so there was like different one day tours, like here's the castles tour and here's the whiskey tour. And I let my husband choose because I had been to Scotland before and he chose the Outlander tour. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And then it turned out it was in February, so it wasn't a lot of like demand for this at the time and we were it was just the two of us with our guy oh. ross who was like in Ooh. a leather motorcycle jacket and a kilt oh and um <laughs> can't take it like, and no it was so funny because i was like i bet we are the only time that you have a mixed group of a man and a woman where it is the man who chose to go on this tour and it is the man who understands oh this is the castle where jamie ran across the, you know and the woman has no clue and, that, and he was like, yeah, it's not usually this yeah. way. But it was, <laughs> it was fun. Mr. Dan and Ross kind of got on well. And they were, and you know, it was cool. It was a lot of the same kinds of castles and stuff that you visit. But yeah, we saw a lot of the major locations. and That's awesome. Um, I went to Scotland with my three best gal pals because of that show. We got yeah. a, little dr a little drunk on whiskey the night the wedding episode aired, which is oh. the one. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and we were like, we're going to go. And so we did. And I we went to Castle Dune, which I think is one of mm -hmm. the castles. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I recommend. <laughs> I'd like to yeah, go back. It was. It's, it's, it's a great, it was a great tour. I mean, we got to see a lot of, a lot of the best, you know, it was a good way to do sort of like highlights of, um, and you know, I think it's a great, been a, a really good thing for some of those towns and places that mm -hmm. upped their tourism quite a bit. This is a long shot, but they didn't have any of the costumes on display, did there? Did they? Or just like the scenic location? Okay. No. Well, they had, you know, we went, in, we went to the town that they used for Inverness, which is a different cool Ross. <laughs> The town that they used to, as Inverness, we um, they were getting ready to film parts of season three or four. Wow. Bree and Roger, it wouldn't have been, like they literally had filming like the day after we were there. So they had this wow. sign. So he was talking about how they had prepared. You could tell um, because they would come, the, the film production people, would come to this square every time they were going to use it for filming and they would paint like all the window sills gold instead of white oh. because not like a shiny gold but you know like a um mustardy color because they wouldn't have been white during world war ii because <laughs> of the danger of um of bombings and all these little details and then when they would be done filming every time they would go back and paint them white again because they have to return everything wow. to the oh, wow to the same state it's that's fascinating so it's like the square where i guess like the inn where claire's staying and mm -hmm. jamie looks up at her from the window yeah. and uh, oh man so much dr oh yeah, i probably no, might need to read that again <laughs> The next book is coming out this year. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, it's um, 
I guess I didn't watch enough of it to get the whole tone. Like I watched parts, you know, mm -hmm. like scenes and like some episodes and yeah, you know, it got, I mean, the plot of, plot is pretty dark. And I think it's really yeah. interesting to me how, um, you know, the assaults that Jamie goes through, the sexual assaults, you know, he, yeah, it my husband found that extremely difficult to watch. And he's like, I don't know if I can keep watching this show. And it just made me realize how men aren't used to seeing that. You know, mm -hmm. women are used to seeing that in, in entertainment constantly. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it here was like, I think a lot of men kind of had that, had that reaction to it. Like, whoa, you know, cause they weren't, they're not used to that. Right. I think you're absolutely right about that. It's such a common mm -hmm. thing in film and media and TV to show women, yeah, violence yeah. against women, and people become not immune to it, but just right. it's not as right. shocking to them. Yeah. And that episode was really intense. I don't know if I could watch it again myself. I was like, I had like a hoodie on and like the strings pulled right, straight exactly. and like biting a blanket. <sighs> Yeah, that's Although, so. I, mean, I would not like, have not unrelated to the assault type scene, but like by my, I call um with with love because I adore those books so much. Um, I call I call the show or the series everyone wants to fuck Jamie because <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's true. So true. <laughs> the girls want it. The guys want it. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody, I mean, it's it's so, but like, they're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. And then there's a scene in one of the later books that I won't describe because it is kind of spoilery. But like Jamie's missing, and like the two people who love Jamie the most end up like, <laughs> and I'm like, what is happening? That the series is so wild. Mm -hmm. Better to get me who those people are. Yeah, I will. Because cool. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I feel like I I wanted to watch the show because I wanted to watch the costuming. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you have to read the book first before you can watch the show. And I was like, okay, yeah, I like following rules. Um, and so I read the book and then I watched the show the first season and I started the second book and it was like a little bit slow for me. And also I think at that point I was like, this is too many pages and I've never returned to it. But everyone's why I'm like, should I? It's definitely I mean, a journey. <laughs> I, at this point I tend to just wait until if there is a conclusion, who knows at this point, it's a little bit like J.R. and George R.R. Martin. Um, but, uh -huh. <laughs> and then like, I'll be like, ancient and I'll be having like hip replacement and then I will like read them all. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I, I'm not, I haven't reread since then, except for like, you know, I just, I, it's so weird to think how young I was when I first read the first like three books of that. I was like 21 and now here I am 45 and wow. Outlander had a step back. I think it did, yeah. And it looks so cool. Here's trivia. Do you know what the original, you probably do, the original uh, British title was? I don't. It was something with um, sewing? Yeah, it was Cross Stitch, which is like the worst title the ever. Worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thing. Like, who let, who let that go through? <laughs> and then she would get letters from people like, I picked this book up because I enjoy needlework. <laughs> wow, it's spicy. Oh, I don't think Claire does any needlework besides people on people. <laughs> so maybe, yeah, there you go. She does. Like a cross stitch in time, maybe. Yes, like I think maybe. that's what it was. It was like it was yeah. Crazy. Like a stitch in time, backward, mm -hmm. forward, or something like that. Oh, huh. interesting. But interesting. yeah, totally, totally random and not even remotely a good title. Oh, I mean, they already had a hard enough time shelving it 
in bookstores like what section do you put it in i don't yeah. know and she was like not in romance and it's like mm-hmm. yeah diana oh, come on yeah <laughs> but you know, she's i guess you know I've, I've never met her i don't know or anything about her but like you know i know the sort of I've heard the stories, right? And how she feels about things. You know, it's like, well, whatever. Women, women, in my opinion, women authors have just as right, much right to be jerks as male authors. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> right. I'm not going to put that on her. Nah, good for her. <laughs> I wrote wonderful books and, and you know. Mm-hmm. And I, I, have I, them mean, all. I honestly don't know if I would show them in romance because they're such a long saga, but right. not in like one the- particular book you know they don't wrap up wraps up mm-hmm. right no yeah no. kidding or not any one eight particular <laughs> i mean obviously no. they, they're having and you know they are in a relationship but mm-hmm. um. unrelated to book well it's it's related to books but not like it's more of a craft question but not a like I lost the train of thought, but I was just curious. Someone was telling me the other day, like an author was saying they have the, their characters first and then they just like write about the people. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if that is something that like, what if you go character first or like story first when you're like writing or do you maybe you mix it both? It depends on the book. Sometimes it's one, sometimes the other. I mean, if I have a series, where I've already established certain characters, obviously it starts with the characters because yes. there they are. And I have to figure out what to do with them. Or sometimes I have just an idea for a really a cute device to get to get two people together. And I just want to write something that comes from that. Like um, any Duchess will do was totally like, I just love the idea of, of a guy being dragged down to Spindle Cove and told, you know, pick a girl and him picking a yes. serving girl. So that was the idea for that book and everything else came from there. That's so wild that like, I remember we read a week to be wicked and I didn't remember, I didn't recognize Griffin. <laughs> Melissa was like, he's hero, not next book at the one after that. I was like, wait, yep. what? I was picking quotes I no for um, any Duchess will do. And so right. I looked and it said Duke and Halford. And then I went back and read. I was like, oh, okay. That's I, was this guy. I was like wondering why Minerva was like up in arms about like Pauline missing and sorry, sports. But you know, it's mm-hmm. like, why does she hate him mm-hmm. so much? And so right. now it makes sense. Uh, yeah. yeah. She knew what a slime ball he used to be. <laughs> I, forget about that. I can't remember did she have a name for her like opera singer that doesn't speak english what was her oh was. she does i don't know the alpine princess assassin um no um i don't remember if we don't is, either. Oh. there we go probably <laughs> the book. <laughs> oh yeah something like melisande there we go melisande. i think alex someone remembered melisande yeah oh, assassin. Oof. Ooh, this is a great question which of your books and characters are the most fun for you to write well, Leak to Be Wicked was a lot of fun to write. Um, another one was, it's a novel, but I'm sorry, I keep taking him out and then letting him back in. He wants to be by this you. And sorry. Oh, a novella called The Scandalous, um, Dissolute, No Good, Mr. Rex. I read that one this year. That was a fun one. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason, it just was. And I still love that. I still think it's one of my best 
I, I recommend it to people who might want to st read something by me, but it stands alone and it's short. So mm. that one has really great, like tension between, mm -hmm. I read that this year for the first time. And I was like, how have I not read this before? What am I doing? It was so fun. <laughs> Aww, well, I'm glad you found it. It was, um, yeah, it, it just, um, well, okay. So I totally, I wrote them with a sort of Rat and Scarlet vibe, but like, okay, but what if Rat and Scarlet weren't like horrible slave owners? It's like, <laughs> but just but that, that vibe, vibe, yeah. She's a little more yeah. older and worldly and she's young and, you know, oh, spirit, you know spirited and, uh, wants to do the whole balls and feel pretty thing and, and um that's eliza when she's younger but then she kind of grows up and and uh oh and also it has to end happily of course so mm -hmm. you know i sort of i love the beginning of that story was was um largely a lot based on the scene where scarlet and red meet in the room where she's angry and she like throws something and he's asleep on the couch she doesn't know it and he wakes up and uh, so that slightly flirty scene that starts everything off so i mean for as, as problematic as come with the wind is it still has some really great iconic scenes to it so that's one mm -hmm. of them for me it's like okay how can we take the good parts of this scene and this dynamic and like put it in a way where they aren't horrible Disgusting mm -hmm. people who defend slavery. So, I like that. Me too. I like just the close proximity of that story too, because they're it's just really good. Well, my favorite novella is um, Beauty and the Blacksmith, which I would be remiss if I did not say, because it's my favorite. I'm waiting for a paperback copy. I finally found one. Aww. That cover, I love it. The anvil, Aaron Dawes. Oh my gosh. Do they He's bang? the best. Oh, yes. In different ways, they bang. <laughs> <laughs> there, and there is banging on the anvil. There is. Literally. As there should be, of many various kinds. <laughs> While I was writing, I remember emailing some friends. I'm like, if I write a story about a blacksmith and I don't have them bang on the anvil, I am missing an opportunity, right? And they were like, yes, this mm -hmm. is required. And so, absolutely. I appreciate it. <laughs> I really liked leading up to, like, in the other, as we've been reading this time, the Spindle Cove, just like seeing pieces of the two of them interacting. I'm like, ooh, I know what's coming for you. Mm -hmm, me too. Um, that just came out in audio too, which I was really excited about. Oh, good. To see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they actually, Aaron and Diana, um, at one point, they were going to be a, a secondary romance in the first book. And the first, it was too long and too, um, and, so, but in my mind, they were already meant to be. So, mm -hmm. I always plan to just stick them together somehow. Yay. He's such a cinnamon roll. He's definitely one of my cinnamon, so cinnamon roll as heroes. So yeah. sweet and proper, and <laughs> he just can't help but fall in love with her. He finds so bad. Mm -hmm. He's like a good <laughs> brother and uncle, and just, you know. Mm -hmm. Solid guy. Mm -hmm. It was nice to write a solid guy for once because, you know, a lot of my guys are very, like, not. They, I mean, they're not bad guys. They just. They're in a process. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, we, we noticed that in Spindle Cove, especially, like, the, the women seem to be very self actualized. They, they are who they are. And it's more the heroes kind of figuring out their place and how they're. A little bit, be. yeah. I feel like um, Kate's the first one who, or know, at least in this series, who like has a fairly prominent arc. Well, I mean, I feel like in some ways they both are having a bit of a self-actualization journey. Whereas I feel like Susanna and Minerva kind of like know who they are and like, this is what I'm going to do mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. I think I yeah, said maybe. a bit of a, I can go the distance moment of like finding where I belong at the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I mean, I think that they they definitely both have these sort of professional goals, um, but they haven't really envisioned themselves finding 
romance and love, which is kind of different from like, for example, Kate, who's just, you know, all a romantic through the whole series. And that's pretty much yeah. her, what she wants. Um, so yeah, but I think that um, in general, like I say that a lot of romances that I love and a lot of romances in general, especially historical ones. And um, so therefore a lot of the ones that I write have, it's a sexual awakening for the heroine and mm. an emotional awakening for the hero. Ooh, so there we um, go, there we go. I love yeah, that. So that's kind of a thing that I kind of go back to again and again, just because I love to read the emotionally repressed hero. I just love them. I just, you know, it's not for everybody. Some people are really good at the roles, guys who are super already access their feelings quite easily and, you know, <laughs> believe themselves to be worthy of love. But I, I, I just love it when the hero's like, I'm not a good friend to, I'm no good for you. You deserve better. Eat it up. I eat that up. I do. I do. <laughs> that he remembers exactly where they were when they met and what she was wearing. Oh, I love that stuff. It's like, oh, I don't know. And he's like, she was wearing the white dress. And the, and the, you know, the yearning. Oh, it's so good. I also noticed on this go round that like, she doesn't call him by his first name until she remembers their shared history. And that's when she calls him Samuel. Aw, does she? I don't remember that. Oh, it was so, <laughs> it was so delicious. So good. It's kind of a, something that gets to be like kind of a big moment Mama. in historicals when, where they go from calling each other Mr. or Miss or Lord or whatever to calling each other by Christian names, first names. Um, it's always kind of a, a, even you even saw that in Bridgerton where they go from calling each yeah. other, you know, my your grace or your grace, it went to um, Daphne and Simon. So it's, it is, it's like, a, it's an, another marker of increasing intimacy yeah. in a way that it wouldn't, you can't really do that in a contemporary that way. Ooh, these are some fun ones. What do you love to read when you're reading and not writing? If if you read too much. I just have really eclectic tastes. Um, just like whatever sucks me in and is really good. It makes me forget to think about it. I, I love. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> because reading, you know, as I'm sure some of you guys are writers and, and um, the dirty secret about writing is that it really affects you as a reader and it's it's mm. sad like um you're always thinking about it in a way that you never were when you were just reading for enjoyment and so any book that makes me forget that and just you know i just enjoy and sink into it it's like thank you it's my favorite book um so i read a lot of different things and and uh sometimes um outside romance and sometimes um and i like to read i, li I like to read more contemporary probably now because of you know when you read historicals it's hard to kind of not be influenced but i do, I, I do also love to read historicals on um, what kind of hero i think i love tortured heroes like, Lisa Kleypas writes some of the most amazingly tortured heroes. I mean, you talk about the ones where, like, I'm not good enough for you, you know, like, I will never love. Oh, I love her heroes so much. <laughs> like, um, so they're, they're probably some of my most, you know, my, my most loved heroes. Um, and, hmm, so yeah, I think I covered that. And sometimes I just read nonfiction and narrative and nonfiction in particular. Um, into that. Ooh, yes. Thank you, Erica. Derek Craven. Right. Derek Craven. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> an emotional awesome. awakening there. Mm -hmm. the, yes, exactly. And talking about exactly. Craven and and you know, and um, oh god, like I'm gonna forget her name. Sarah? What's her Sarah, name? Sarah Fielding. Yeah. Okay. She's you know, she's having her 
physical awakening and but she's you know the whole time she's just like just let me love you and he's like no i'm too bad i'm too damaged I'm too <laughs> <laughs> you're like no Amazing. you're not same with like um lord of scoundrels you know dane is just, <gasps> yes <laughs> such a good feels book so oh. unworthy has some uh. internal uh, you know wrong ideas about him Self, you know, because he, you know, is supposedly ugly and all these, you know, and it's just, ugh. I think Adriana Herrera said in like a, a Faded Mates podcast that like that book has the equivalent of the hand flex scene when they, I think he like has her glove or something. And I was yeah. like, ugh. there's an un unbuttoning of the glove scene. Yes. Just the most amazing thing and you know every time i mean removing of gloves is is sexy in general but like yeah. every time i write it i'm just like oh, nobody will ever talk that scene like it's just amazing all the scenes in there are amazing like the you know the the part where he, he like destroys her dance card because like I'm, I'm, I'm oh. really, none of these are spoilers because he's like she's gonna dance with him and so she, you know they have these little dance cards at this ball that look like fans and um mm -hmm. and the other guy's like i believe she's promised this dance to me and he's like oh where's your name is it here and he snaps like the little pieces of the fan every time yes. here or here and like and then uh, like once he's gotten to the end he just like crumples the whole thing and throws it to the floor and it's like that's amazing. you're like and it's just, like, <laughs> oh that's so good, good. that's so, so good. good so good mm. oh, but i also i need to reread that that book plays so much with all the gender dynamics it's like yeah. She takes so much of it and, and totally turns it on its head. Mm -hmm. Like she's the one, she rips his clothes off in the, right. he's, he's the one who's afraid right. it won't fit. Oh, I forgot about that. sleep with her for ages. <laughs> oh he's my gosh. It won't fit. <laughs> That's so good. Right? That one's it's really true. <laughs> no, it's true. That one, and I also really love The Last Tellion, which like, I feel like isn't as like touted, but the tension in, in The Last Tellion is so delicious. She's I love it. Oh, she's great. Oh, uh, Lizanne, we were talking about Lord of- I don't of know where we got from, how, how did we get from um, here? This oh, is Lord, Lord of Lord by of um, Loretta Chase, which is phenomenal. Classic. Books. Classic. Do you have any authors? Like I know Sarah McLean is famous for like having like what would Cressley do on her desk as like ah. but are there any like authors that you that are kind of on your like pantheon of faves of like well Lisa's one of them and Julia Quinn, like the two of them, Alice Quinn said, I want to be the right like the love child of Lisa Claypers and Julia Quinn. Um somewhere in that middle um i so i love both of their books julie garwood oh i, I think um she is like totally my my first real historical romance author mm -hmm. and um just so much i mean and she wrote like the plucky heroines who were in yeah. the and the um they're a little too innocent for me going back you know really you really, Jamie, you really think you need to buy an indulgence every time your husband swears. But you know, like, it's so adorable <laughs> in the book, right? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and so I love, that's from The Bride, I think. And um, so I love Julie Garwood, some of my very first historical romances. And mm. there's a lot, there's a lot in Goddess of the Hunt that I can go back and look at and it's like, oh God. That's total Julie, Julie Garway oh. rubbing off in me. I, it's terrible, really, actually. It's very, very obvious, and it's a little bit embarrassing. Um, hey, but, we all fangirl a little bit, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it, it's the way everybody learns to write. All writing is is fan fiction of a sort until... But anyway, obviously, of course, Jane Austen. So if I have a, if I have a what would somebody do, it's Jane. I mean, she's on my list. So, like, yeah, my writing hand. Oh, that's cool. I like that. 
Mm-hmm. But Me I mean, my books aren't like her, but like, you know, I don't know. Just like the, that's just the reason we have Regency romance. Yeah. Basically. I love hearing, I feel like, like, I've heard the whole like, technically Jane Austen was an historical romance author because she was writing contemporary. <laughs> and I think it's always- I mean, yeah, but so. Like, yeah, but it doesn't, it's interesting to hear people like deep dive on it and I'm like, eh, it doesn't really matter. She, she's the origin point. Well, there are a lot of people who are very invested in thinking that they love Jane Austen, but they wouldn't go slumming with romance novels. So. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> And Too then, bad for and them. Yeah, they'll write like a ton. They'll read tons of fan fiction, which is basically amateur oh, romance yes. novels, mm-hmm. like Darcy as a Highwayman or whatever. It, it, which you know, hey, I, mean, I would like to awesome. read that. Fun. Darcy as a rock star, one of my oh, favorite wow. books, my favorite fan fics, which eventually got published. Um, oh, what book is it? It's called, I believe, it's called Fitzwilliam Darcy, rock star. I'm googling. Source books brought it out. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like amazing. And it's super hot. Um, so yeah, like um, the they're in bands, like both Darcy and Lizzie, and hers is called um, Longborn Suffering. Wow. <laughs> her and her sister. It's, it's fantastic. Wow. This looks um, great. It's a fun yeah. cover. Mm-hmm. So um, so anyway, yeah. So but basically, Jane. Jane Austen fan fiction is romance novels, Regency romance novels, like often sexy ones, but um, there's like this weird, you know, it's like a mental block, like we'll read this, but it, it's a step too yeah. far to go to a book with a fair chested man on it. So, okay, well, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Speaking of Jane, though, I do am very excited for this new persuasion. Which one is this? It's um, um, Henry Golding is playing. Golding. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah. But that just Although he's not the lead. One. Yeah, that was just announced. I think okay. they because they are filming another one. There's like a million yeah. of these. They're filming another one in Bath because I saw somebody. Um, I think they're posted. filming that one right now. Are they the? Henry Golding yeah, one. Henry Golding was in costume. I've seen some photos. Oh, oh yeah, I, I forgot. It okay. must be the well, one. Well, it didn't have his. It didn't have his head in it. So like it was, but I, I could have sworn it wasn't. It was somebody else. But anyway, maybe it's a different scene. Word. Well, because he's scene not. He's not the lead. He's the villain. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, now that I was like, no. <laughs> Henry Golding in Persuasion and not make him. I mean, no. And the guy who plays the the lead is like, he's a fine, charming looking person, but he's not Henry Golding. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. what's the thought process here? Well, in an interview, this is in Love Letters from a Lord. All my thoughts though. about, sorry, all my thoughts about mm-hmm. persuasion. I persuasion is not one of my favorite Austins. Uh, it's okay. Sorry, <laughs> I mean, I love her. I love it. You know, it's not like it's a bad book, but it's. It, it 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 gets under my skin. I don't I don't I don't I think Frederick's kind of a nice guy. Ooh yeah, I can see that. Got <laughs> yeah, rejected, stormed off, gone for eight years, comes back, pouts. Ooh, I like this question. Um thinking about tropes, is a romance with a rake the historical equivalent of falling for a rock star? I mean, I think so. I mean, I think Rake is kind of like Playboy, right? You know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. if a book says like a Playboy type in a contemporary, I think about it. And so we think about rock stars being Playboys. Mm-hmm. It could be. Ooh, yeah. That makes just that just makes me think of the new Kristen Callahan that's out and how I need to read it. It's so good. Oh exposed. Yes. Very good. That's another, although I think Scott's book, Managed, is another he can't sleep without her book, which is mm-hmm. a great trope. God, yes. I love nightmares, like any, like oh. that stuff is amazing. It's so good. Because they're so like, so good. they're so put together during the day and then they can't, they're out of control yes. at night and they yes. just and need. And they're vulnerable. 
Mm -hmm. and like heart racing and then like you're already in bed and like probably scantily clothed if it clothed because they all sleep without clothes <laughs> you know <laughs> and so um you know i don't janet Mullaney. do milani Mullaney. do you any of you know her as an author i've heard she the name wrote, before, like, I, I don't think she's published anything for a, a while but she wrote some signet regencies but when those existed. And she wrote like a book that was a, a little bit of a send up of regency romance. Um, and it had at the end of it was like 10 things that you never hear a hero say in a regency romance. And I don't remember most of them, but one of them was, of course, you know, I wear a nightshirt and nightcap every night. Why would my honeymoon be any different? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> um, people are yelling Scotty in the comments. As they should. They should. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I do love Theo James, but I don't know. I'd be like, he said, did he say sketchy things? I, I didn't pay as I much. I don't know. He thought I just, it was more interesting for Sandy to Oh, yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> a unhappy ending. As if Jane Austen doesn't know how to write an interesting yeah, you book know. that ends happily. I don't know. Mm. Just kidding. Well, He's now the Willoughby of Sandy Tim and just get rid of him and bring yep. on somebody better. They have Next. two more seasons. Bye bye. Yep. Bye bye. Got the more no seasons. Right. Oh, I knew that he had said something unfortunate. Ugh. <sighs> Disappointing. He, he, he just left with like what? He just kind of gave a finger to all the fans as he left. It was really tacky, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like you could have just said nothing. It's just like so, you know, sadly scheduling conflicts mean I can't participate in these seasons. But I know that the viewers will get a wonderful story that they deserve, or whatever. He could have done That's all he needed to say. Yeah, he could have been. Our what's his name? The Duke, Duke of Hastings, Simon. Yeah, Reggae Jean, Reggae Jean Page. Page. Yeah. Excellent approach. He he did. He did it really well. He did it really well, and you know was very gracious to the fans and the other actors and everything. So charming. He never was like I'm moving on to better things. Like even if he thought he was, but you know, like <laughs> you just you don't say that. <laughs> say that out loud. Right, and it costs nothing to be kind and realize that you're leaving oh. a cast and crew that are very working very hard on and, that show. And fans, and fans who want a happy ending aren't dumb. That's the other, no. that's the thing It, you know, if you get invested in a story that's based on a Jade Austen novel, even an incomplete one, her books end with the couples getting together. They just mm -hmm. do. There is they nothing just, yeah. basic about Assuming that Sandy Tim was going to end up with Sydney and Rose, Rose, or is that her real name? I don't remember. I think that's the actress's real name. Okay, anyway, Sydney and 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 is it Charlotte? Charlotte, there we go. Thank you. Sydney and Charlotte together. I mean, uh, she was going there, obviously. I mean, and there's nothing like uninteresting or or girly about it you, you know about being invested in that which is why it bothered me so much like, it's not like people say that jane austen's books are interesting because they end with the with the romance like right right yeah. they're still like genius works of fiction <laughs> sorry it's not cool enough for you the oj yeah <laughs> Give some Give hot unknown sad. actor a chance and it'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, it'll be great. It'll be fine. She'll have somebody so much better. It could be Young Stringer, but I don't think they can string, huh? can make that into two more seasons. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. But mm. They would have to torture them so much and it'd just be like on again, off again. You no, know, another disaster could drive us all nuts. I was about to ask this also. Claudia from the Stud Club. What happens to her? I don't Saturday. think it will ever happen, but I always, you know, I always kind of had in mind that 
I, I thought a lot, you know, about, and I don't think it will ever happen, but writing a book where, with her and Peter, but obviously with other people. Mm -hmm. And, um, That'd be like, cool. them having been, like, really close friends um, for a really long time and, and her kind of being her scandalous self. It's like, people assuming that he was the father of her kid, kind of, like, you know what I'm saying? It's a little bit of a weird situation. But just, like, letting people believe what they want and just being, like, the the scandalous people of town. And then, and her son being old enough that he's... Um, away at school and getting in trouble because the other kids are making fun of his mom for being, Ooh. yeah, exactly. And so they're like, okay, we have to break up publicly and bad. And, and then the kid runs away and they have to go find him. I don't know. It was like, yeah, it was, uh, I don't remember where it went from there, but you know, it would be fine, but it's so long ago. Just, yeah, spider spy stuff. Who would do spy stuff? Pro like spy his, stuff. You know, his well, you spy, 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 spy stuff for years. Who the is, spy is spy that, that he falls in love with, and then, you know, Claudia will find her. Yes. Guy. But it would just be so, it would be a lot, and it would, those characters are so long ago, and. I feel and like this feel good to imagine it. They would have this great, you know, adventure that ends in romance for them both. Yes. They and were fans be good friends. Really in my mind, all secondary characters get an HEA at of some point they in their journey. And I'm like, that's good for me. <laughs> the nice ones. I mean, the mm -hmm. And the bad ones. Together. Claudia would need a guy who can handle her. That would really be. You know, yeah. when people ask me about, like, will this sister get a book? Like, she's like 15 in the book, right? So, like, this is with um, Charlotte um, Highwood. That was kind of a problem because she was so young in the early Spindle Code. Yeah. Days. Or like when's Charlotte gonna get a story? I'm like, she was like 14 years old. Um, I love her book. That's another one of my favorites. Aw, thanks. Yeah, but I had to age her up pretty fast, and like she's still only like 19 or 20. You know, it's like mm -hmm. she's on the younger side, but she uh, hopefully made it work. But um, and then. Phoebe, people ask about Cleo's little sister from Say Yes to the Marquis. And I again, she's like about 15. That. So, and she's, you know, not neurotypical. So it would be, I feel like she would, like 19 or 20, not going to work. For her. So I don't know. Like, I would love to write about her someday, but in, it, you have to, like, give them time to grow up in your head a little bit and figure mm -hmm. out. Who they'd be? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Very cool. Well, we're coming up to almost eight o'clock. So, oh my I, gosh, I'm so sorry. Like, no, I. Oh, this is amazing. Been great. Mm -hmm. This has been great. Is there any last questions we want to make sure Tessa asks? Oh. Or yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and that I was another like one that wasn't planned. I was like. Uh, Oh gosh, people are asking for a Charlotte book. And then people are like, what about Piers? You know, he's gonna get a happy ending, right? After say yes to Marquis. And um, I was like, I have these two opposite people, you know, and then what if I put them together? And then I thought, oh, they'd be horrible for each other. No. They'd be horrible for each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. One of those sometimes those little things are you know the little um what do you want to call it <laughs> my dog now uh, <laughs> um, he's they're the the things that just spark some inspiration mm -hmm. so that was obviously a book where the characters came first but then the plot was very like clue scooby-doo 
Mystery. So good. So good. A lot of fun. Ooh, I think someone noticed there are three heroines with brothers named Henry. Are there really? I wouldn't be surprised. And I think <laughs> there might be a, a hidden a meaning there or... Oh, that makes sense. Sometimes I just, you know, I forget and I use the same name. I have somewhere a spreadsheet that somebody made me, but I think it was only up through, I don't know, the Castles books and it hasn't been updated or I have my different characters. And like every time I have to name somebody, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> that must be so hard. I'm. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's uh, something there that were a lot of guys named Henry, and there was like every other guy was named George. Yeah. And of the yeah. ones that weren't named George, like half of those were named John. And then the rest of them are a smattering of like Phillips, Fredericks, uh, Henrys. Honestly, for all the talk about historical accuracy, I'm very grateful that that's not something the authors do with names because, like, if I'm like, oh, my favorite author is, or my favorite hero is Lord James, and everyone's like, wait, which one? And I have to be like, Right. <laughs> that would be so tiring. You really do start to run out. I mean, I have two heroes named George, but no, neither one of them was my George. So. Oh. Ash in the Dutch of Steel is my right. George. And same with um, Lord Dashwood in Lord Dashwood Missed Out, which okay. is just, I know that was. So right. That well, because, yeah, you don't have to just give them a first and last name. You have to give them a name and a title right. and all and of like, that, too. titles. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, some of them, if they're dukes, they have, like, four different oh. extras. They, and they have courtesy titles in there, too. And then they're butlers and they're maids. And they're, it's just, you know, Penny and all our animals. And <sighs> so uh, I use a lot of times just leave it blank. and Or, like, I come up with a placeholder. Like, there's been a whole lot of brothers just named brother. And, like, a lot of the <laughs> brothers that aren't are named Henry, apparently, um, oh, no. or name something that begins with B, because I finally am like, oh, God, I have to replace brother, and so it's like, the 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 Benedict. So you are just like our couple who named all their kids BC names in oh, A Lady by Midnight. <laughs> That was so cute. I was like, oh, oh, and I cried a little. Uh, <laughs> of course, nowadays, a lot of historical heroes have tattoos. But back then, it wasn't very common. So I like, it's like, I want a hero with tattoos. And that scene to, where he tells her all about them. And I'm like, oh, this is really good. And it's true. It's something they that. did. It was really terrible. It was like prison tattoos, literally, where they just, you know, just poke your the letters BC through and then smear in some black powder and there you go. You can't right. ever get back in the army now, son. Right. It's like I hope this doesn't get infected. It's fine. <laughs> oh. We want to close out with a few trivia questions. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Question number one. Do you remember the name of the book? they collect in Spindle Cove, or even just the name of its author. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Mrs. Butterworths, no, um, <laughs> Mrs. <laughs> is it Worthington's Wisdom yes. for Young Ladies or something like that? Okay. It is. But he also Worthington. I think <laughs> it's her first name is Eugenia, Eugenia Worthington or something like that. Yeah, I think it's Miss Worthington's Wisdom or something like that. Yeah. Somebody was like, why don't you write that? And I'm like, no. Mm, that doesn't that? sound like fun. Nobody, Nobody wants. We just want to. We're just coming up with the little fake excerpts was bad enough. <laughs> oh, and Badger eating one and getting Kate thrown into jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. The second one was, which of your books includes water aerobics? Mm. Which of my books what? Includes water aerobics. Water aerobics. Well, that's a night to surrender. <gasps> Such a good scene. The ball and chain. Yes. Beth, do you want to do the next one? Oh, yeah. Let me get my notes back up here. Ooh. 
Ooh, this well, is fun. <laughs> what is the name of the ant that keeps wandering off in Goddess of the Hunt? Oh, it's Matilda. Mm -hmm. It is! Yay! <laughs> um, we already talked about which couple has sex on a piano, so we're going yes, we to pass that one. Do you remember how many stud club tokens there are? Ten. Uh, I only know that because I had to reread those books. <laughs> yeah. Recently, yeah. yeah. So I, oh, uh, those, I've cheated by having to reread those recently. There you go. I love Do you this. remember the name of Gray's ship in Surrender of a Siren? Aphrodite. Yes. The love boat. I mean, that's terrible. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Terrible. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's okay. So, it's so cheesy. Like, how did I? <laughs> <laughs> <Or whatever>. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so bad that it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, hmm, something here. All right. Um, what projectile is catapulted at Kate and Thorne in A Lady by Midnight? A melon. Oh, so cute. It's a melon for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. He took a melon for me. <laughs> and that's because I went to a real castle in um, England, Bodium Castle, where they actually have a trebuchet and they demonstrate it by firing watermelon. That's so cool. That's um, awesome. That's um, really cool. Can you remember the daily activities of the denizens of Spindle Cove? Okay. Or, like, by the week. I have to do this pretty like, okay, Monday. Is that the country walks? Tuesday is sea bathing. Wednesday's a garden. Or is it Monday is sea bathing? Okay. Wednesday's a garden for sure. Thursday, they shoot. I know that. And that was all Friday, correct. Friday they go up to the castle and Saturday is the salon. Okay. I had to, you know, since I'm doing Sally's novella right now, I had to refresh my memory of those as well. What is the name of Minerva's fossil? Francine. Yes. <laughs> I forgot that she shoots Francine, and I was so startled at the end of the book. I was like, "No!" And I was like, ah, "I'd oh, kind of forgot." That was one where I wasn't sure what should happen. You know, I was like, "Oh, I need something terrible to happen," but like, you know, like he couldn't destroy it. Like that would be you'd never forgive him, and he just wouldn't do it, right? Yeah. So, but like her making the sacrifice, I thought, "Oh, that really worked." Sorry. I shouldn't so, say that. Like, well, I should. You know what? Why not? I should be happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that book. There's, <laughs> looking back at other books, I want to change so much about them, but that is one of my books that I actually can look back and think, I'm really happy with this book. I still mm -hmm. like it. <laughs> That's awesome. This is the most anticipated one we've gotten to thus far. Like last mm -hmm. week, I feel like. Like last week, people were just like, I have nothing to say except for this is beautiful and I love them. Aww. And then of course the Old Spice moment where we were like, oh my God. Yeah, there was a lot of overall fan fanning over that one. Nice. It's beloved. It is, you know, I would say there's probably, it's the, the people who like Week to be Wicked Best of Spindle Cove are a bigger group, but then the people who like Thorn and the Lady by Midnight are like a very devoted group, <laughs> smaller yet intense. So, yeah. Ugh. The angst is just so acute. Nobody's favorite is Bram. <laughs> Poor Bram. Sorry, <laughs> Bram. I accidentally didn't make it compelling enough. I feel like it just feels like Suzanne, like it's their book, but like Susanna is the hero yeah. of that. Book, There's so know? much else going on too, because they had to set up the whole series and it was, you know. I was still figuring out what the series is even about and stuff. So, I will say yeah. one thing I very much appreciated upon the reread of that one is the way that like his ideas of what masculinity is are very much like challenged and like slowly kind of like repealed. And then in this book, you see him like as a devoted father and like really like nurturing and like previously where he's like, yeah, we don't nurture people's men. <laughs> so like, yeah, hyper masculine. And then like the like, it's a very kind of like gentle 
learning process for him. And he's so delightful in this book. I love watching heroes turn into like big softy dads and husbands. Yes. Uh, thank you, Farisa. I am with you. <laughs> <laughs> Far not away. Uh, but... Me too. <laughs> and then there's some places like, um, like Aaron is like super popular in among my Brazilian readers. I don't know. It's interesting to mm -hmm. me the ones that the books that are really popular with readers in other countries. Mm -hmm. Like Beauty and the Blacksmith is like I would say um, disproportionately popular <laughs> in Brazil compared to here. And Please. say yes to the Marquis <laughs> as well. And I, oh, I kind of want and both of those you need to go to Brazil. Kind of like I guess. the strong cinnamon roll kind. And I don't know if it's like a that's just like a, a, you know, a kind of hero that resonates more, or if um, I think it's men for me, y'all. Um, I think maybe it also has to do with, I wonder sometimes how much humor translates, you know, if like a guy like Colin, like he's really funny and charming, mm -hmm. but if you're translating it into another language, it takes a lot of skill to get the same kind of humor across. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I always feel kind of, and sometimes it just, it couldn't really be possible. You would have to like come up with an entirely different pun or joke to get the same yeah. effect. Yeah. And like, I, I doubt that they, that translators have the opportunity to do such a thing. So yeah. I, I wonder if like some of that humor that particularly endears them to readers here in English is possibly not translating as much. And so like the heroes who are more like sincere and, um, you know, just sort of strong and devoted are, are more popular for that reason. It's interesting to me. Yeah, that is interesting. Those are my two so absolute healthy. favorites. So I'm like, I guess I better go to Brazil yeah. <laughs> visit and say, hey. <laughs> Brazil, anyway, we, when the pandemic is over. Yes. People are we have so fun. much in common. <laughs> Yeah, so I wonder like, if it's poster of Aaron. Like I, I yeah. Hmm. I will go and deliver things when it's safe to do so. Yes. <laughs> go hit up a library. I wonder if it's kind of a counter to counter kind of that machismo, like South hmm. American man, like maybe you know, maybe. like it's. But who knows? That's possible. Interesting. Maybe there are just more copies of one body <laughs> around out there. I don't know. It just, yeah. It, it's, uh... Anyway, and when we could be wicked and when, when the um, when Scott, that's another one that got completely rewritten. Really? I tried to write it like 17 different ways and with totally different characters. Maddie was like much more assured and beautiful kind of heiress and mm. was trying to like get away from all the suitors that she was having to deal with by going to this castle in Scotland. And I just couldn't make it work. I could not make it work at all. And I was, and once again, my very smart editor was like, I think you just need to take all this anxiety and uncertainty that you're feeling and uh, put it into the book. And so I was like, okay, so cool. right. start over with Maddie. She's just, she's a nerd. She's insecure. She's socially anxious. She just wants to hide, you know? And um, so I just came up with the idea of her being like an illustrator for naturalists. And I kind of went from there. And then this, you know, idea of not wanting to be on the marriage part and writing letters that, yeah, I don't know where that part came from, but like I'm glad it did. So like mm -hmm. I wrote, I wrote all of Maddie's letters, right, uh -huh. that are in the beginning of the book, and then I was like, I know this girl, and I was really excited to read, to write the rest of it. I cannot wait for that book in the reread. It's it's been a, one of my all time faves for a while. Mm -hmm. When he wears glasses in bed. Oh, <laughs> that's what I thought. 
I mean, he picks oh. it up off our shelf, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Guys reading in bed is so sexy. It's so yeah, good. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Oh, but yeah, Goddess of Night recently came back out on audio. It was on audio, and then like something about the the publisher's like agreement with the distributor or whatever lapses like for seven years or whatever, and then then it wasn't available for like a year, but now it's back with a new, it's probably a totally new narrator and everything. Mm. Very cool. Well, uh, we have the two hour mark and I wanna be mindful of your time, but thank you so much for so much fun. having some really, really lovely. Mm -hmm. I, like I had the best time. Like talking about other people's books and other TV and stuff like that. <laughs> More than I enjoy talking about my own. But thank you for asking mm -hmm. so many nice and perceptive questions. I'm super proud of myself for passing my own trivia yes, test. You totally yeah, did. you did great. You did Which so I was good. lucky, like seriously, that I had to go through some of this stuff recently. Or else I totally <laughs> would not have remembered. Um, I recognize, I, I see that there were, you, you could have, you could have come at me with like the Toby and Bell, like nobody likes them. Nobody likes that book. There's like five people in the world who enjoy that book. <laughs> there were some really fun and moments. It's okay. that one. It's a book I really like, she, does she tie him up or does he tie her up? He ties her up. Yeah, that was really, yeah. mm -hmm. the boat was fun. We liked it. But that's one of those things that, like I said, you know, um, some things that I learned, you know, along the way, like I could write that book so much better now. I could write that character much better now. And and um, I'm not gonna, but like <laughs> I look back at it. And, uh, I see kind of where, um, where I could have done a better job, but yeah, it's fine. If you didn't like it, nobody liked it. I remember <laughs> I was like, all the bad reviews came out and like I went to Disneyland in the rain. I live like 10 minutes from Disneyland. And Ooh. I had an annual pass at the time. I was like, I'm gonna go to the happiest place on earth. When it <laughs> rains. It's raining. It's not a golf. I was just like walking around in the rain, feeling so oh. <laughs> but you can't even be mad about the rain because you need the rain. Yeah, that's it's fine. Funny. It's a funny story now. I got over it. <laughs> that's <funny. laughs> Now I can look back and like, yeah. Some of the reviews for that was so funny too. They were like, well, I love that you were kind of doing. Like, Belle, I hated Belle and her selfish desire to change the world. <laughs> 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 it's so yeah, changing the world, man. <laughs> I love that you kind of were doing the read along uh, as we were since you just recently yeah. read those books too. You didn't even know. <laughs> <That's Yeah. great. laughs> I haven't re reread the that original trilogy, which never had a name. But see, oh, like, oh. I didn't know back then. I didn't have a name, that trilogy. And eventually I just stuck on to Dairy Maid on it because like there wasn't a name and I didn't know what else to call it. So it's just for my website or whatever. And some, you know, eventually it ended up on Goodreads or whatever as the title of the series. But when was the novella released about the author of the book? Because we're going to read that one. Oh, yeah. That's um, The Legend of the Were Stag originally. Another yeah. stupid title. Like, well, yeah. that was purposely <laughs> stupid. Um, that was the result of a bet. Yes, the that's author cute. of the book is in that. She's not the heroine, but she's in that. And now it's called How to Catch a Wild Viscount. Yeah. I'm excited to read that one. Me too. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to because we're going to do it. Yeah, well, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> we will. <laughs> it's short. So if you don't, you okay. It is like well, we're also going like, to reread uh, Beauty Portrait and the Black with, So, Portrait, like, Portrait regardless. It's one of those portrait by war heroes. You know. Ooh, I mean, hey, that's all you got to say. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you so much for chatting with us. And this may not be the last time that we chat. 
I don't think so. I think I get to come back when you guys are done. Like, what? Yay! I won't blame you all if you just drop off at some point. Oh, no. Like, oh. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh -uh. Start skipping around. And, like, mm -mm. You, you can make for me. I should pay one of you to make update my spreadsheet of whose names I've used. I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For free. Melissa, I, I'm, I'm not going to email me and then. Yeah. Melissa's very good at spreadsheets. She is. Awesome. I She's am. the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried to, starting to do like a thing for Sarah McLean's books too, and I kind of got stuck too. But awesome. Mm -hmm. No, would be Melissa would be great. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then you're just, you know, since you're doing it anyway, you, know, you can find like how many butlers that named the same thing or whatever. Oh. Something terrible. Yeah, this is like, good. Things like this that. Is good. Close. <laughs> well, we better. You can't get that. Oh, yeah, we, we cannot I that. don't remember who coined this term, but it someone, like one of us, someone no, in the group. I think it was specifically in a week to be wicked, where Minerva says it's smooth as talc, and soft as what was the other one? Like hard. Oh, have it Vel like. Velvet. Usually like hard as granite. Granite. Hard as granite. There we go. You know, because there's that scale of the hardness of um, rocks. Yeah. And like one or zero is talc. And then like 10 is diamonds or something. Yeah. I don't think that scale existed then, but you know. Hey, this is for us. I was trying oh, to yeah. in a unique way, you know. How would Minerva describe something? The king yes. Okay, I know exactly which book that's from. Hold on, no, 10 seconds, not 10 seconds even. I have to plug in my thing before it dies. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> oh, not much. Okay. Oh, it was late. Have to move so that props to Lacey for coining that term. It's my favorite. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. That's an amazing, amazing word. I'm going to use yes. it all the time now. Uh, you can send it. You can send it with your spreadsheet, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, I'm gonna have to move you a little bit. You're gonna see a different part of my of my home somehow. Okay, so now I'm plugged in. I'm um, ears. But am I wrong? Wait, which book did you say it was from? Oh, that's from Goddess of the Hunt. Absolutely it is. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> but what, that and, and was it wrong? I mean. <laughs> no. I'm not wrong. <laughs> nope. It's pretty soft. Yeah. Talking about the riches. So good. <laughs> it was perfect is what it was. <laughs> it was really perfect. Mm hmm that's when I knew we were going to have a really great book club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so but yeah, that's a, for me an important part of characterization. Is she wants you, you know who the character is, what their interests are, and in their own frame of reference is. Mm -hmm. So then you put that into the way they describe things. And that's, that's part of how you keep the love scenes and, and kisses and whatnot from becoming super repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, by, you know, Minerva is going to describe. Gonna have a different description than Percy. Then mm -hmm. yes. yes, 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 yes. We were noticing that about Thorn too. He's you know even describing himself as like a statue and rock and granite and marble, and it was just really great. I love the scene with the is it the lone man or the the long man? The statue oh that God. they all go to see. Yes. Um, yes. Like, and no. Marmus said, "Is like, well, that's um, not. <laughs> that's not what I hoped. <laughs> yeah, it's not very long, is he? Right. Because have you seen the other one that has the big phallus? Mm -hmm. the, yes. Uh, CERN, the giant of CERN, or something like that. Yeah, it's yes. much more impressive. But I, I did. I saw the long man from the train as I was on my trip to Sussex that I took when I was preparing this series and." Um, I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let's send them on a picnic somewhere. Okay, they can go see that thing. See, retrospectively, I'm like, that also gives me like Emma energy. Like, we're all going on a trip to Box Hill, which is kind of <laughs> Yeah, that's true. 
That's true. That's I like that part of um of Emma, of course. Play, you know. I love Emma. That's one of my favorite Austin books. What so, did you think of the new Emma? I loved it. I mean, it's different. I love Anya Taylor Joy. She's so, yeah. Uh, I find her absolutely mesmerizing. In fact, I was just watching the Queen's Gambit favorite mm -hmm. parts, like for the fourth time. I mm -hmm. I love to rewatch that, but I just rewatched the chess tournament, parts. Mm -hmm. and um, I just love her. I just find her in the witch. She's amazing in that too. She's just really really mesmerizing. Um, yeah. She's great on SNL too. Mm -hmm. Oh, she! I didn't see that. I need to go back and see that. She was really fun. Yeah, and she has such an interesting, like, she's like Argentinian, yeah. something, and or Australian. I um, yeah, she's um, but the fact that she she's she's so young, and she has mm -hmm. like this mastery of all these accents and so much talent. I just um. I think she's amazing. So yeah, I love the new Emma, even though it was a little, you know, I don't think it's my favorite. I, 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 I know, like, what do you want to say? Un hot take, unpopular opinion. I love the Gwyneth Paltrow. I, I do too. too. I do too. <laughs> that was my first one, I think, yeah. which might flavor my right, right. And preference it's so too. Pretty, but... and it's so like, I mean, and um, what's his name? Jeremy Nordlum? Is that his mm -hmm. name? As Mr. Knightley, little... yeah. Mm -hmm. He's so perfect and love him. And um, I think and, it's the most romantic yeah. one. Ewan McGregor mm -hmm. is Frank Churchill. So good. He's so the good. best Frank. Full stop. Best For Frank. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think when I was not like feeling it, no, I was like, this is not Frank Churchill. He's not nearly like sexy enough. Like, no, and they <laughs> would not be like, oh my gosh, like after him. No, no. Okay. And Johnny Flynn felt way too young to be nightly, but you know, casting aside, I thought it was really good. I do think their dancing scene gets the closest to the Pride and Prejudice dancing scene that I have seen. Yes. Yeah, They're, that like, tension is really good. And he is so funny. He brings so much funny this nightly. Like, like runs home and he just plays on the floor. Yes. I just love that so much. I will say I agree with Sarah that I think. Clueless is one of the best adaptations in my, well, one of my favorite adaptations. I, I read, I watched that recently with my daughter. So I was, I, there's always these movies. I'm like, you need to watch this as part of your, your cultural foundation, <laughs> like Heather's For or, sure. you know, you haven't watched Mean Girls. We're going to watch Mean Girls because you have to, you won't sure. get like jokes if you don't. So um, I, we watched, this and um the i was like that's paul rudd he's so good in that movie oh he's good and he's so young but he he's like the guy who never ages right i know rude oh, i forgot him that he was the nightly-ish character mm -hmm. yeah oh, yeah that is so good too and then, like, I watched, rewatched 10 Things I Hate About You recently. Oh, that's a perfect film. <laughs> in all the way. Mm -hmm. so uh, honestly, any Enemies to Lovers book, that's the energy that I want between yes. them. Like, uh, yes. So good. They're so, and both they're, I love it is so earnest and, like, charm. I burn, I pine, I perish. Mm -hmm. And there's, mm. and her, her dad is just hilarious. Like, obstetrician, mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he made the Put perfect, the belly on. <laughs> he made, made the perfect way to have this overprotective dad. Wait. In the modern era. It's like, I, she worked on 10 things. Well, then, what did you, what did you work on? That's a, that's so sick. I love the line where he's like laying down the laws and he's like, no boys, no parties, no ritualistic animal sacrifices. <laughs> Son, what did you do? I have a friend who wrote one of co-wrote one of the songs on the um, soundtrack. Oh, that's um, awesome. It's such a good, like such a perfect like night what early nineties ska soundtrack. Yeah, like, the music's really good. Which song? 
Not that uh, I, I don't remember. It's called not one of the major ones that was like a single. It's called Super mm -hmm. something. Super. I listen to that song fairly frequently. Mm -hmm. Or not the album. It's like a good vibes album. Mm -hmm. You were in the AD department, which means... What does AD mean? I'm, I'm sorry. Did I get right? Super. Did you plan their paintball fight? Oh, I, I mean, <laughs> it's funny because at the at the same time I'm like, oh, that's so adorable. And then I'm also like, I'm just thinking like, okay, how long would it take to get the paint off of my body? Would I be uncomfortable the whole time? Oh, this is a director. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's, that's really cool. That is really awesome. Really, really cool. What uh, a fun yeah. one to have been a part of, you know. Right, something that's the classic sort of now. iconic, and you know, not like something that just nobody remembers. Well, I'm sure I you should have the... as well. <laughs> they right, hit you the, like, I, but you guys I... have to go. I do for sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> this has been the most delightful thing, and I cannot wait to chat with you we'll again back. at the end of this. Okay. Look back on everything. The list of <laughs> we'll keep it we'll keep them. Yep. <laughs> Be sure to mark the point where I get lazy and start repeating myself. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think you will. Overused phrases. You can you can make a list of those. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you told this joke in the same. I. <laughs> yeah. When that's the that's the problem when people glom something. It's like oh God, you're gonna know how so many times I use the same description or and that you know I didn't notice but no I have yet to hit something that I was like this feels familiar except for the Pride and Prejudice bits but that was brought me great joy because you know that was more nod to that was a, a nod a hat tip somebody of the hat actually complained to me in person they stuck <laughs> somebody actually complained to me and my heroes like spend on the heroine's belly it's just so, ah. it's so unappealing. Like, what are you supposed to call it? <laughs> I'm like, look, where, where should it go? And like, she's like, on the floor? <laughs> what? How was that better? <laughs> Is that better? I'm like, wait, no. like, consider like, the cleanup. Like, the next morning, they get up and slip on the pile of what? <laughs> Oh man. Oh goodness, goodness. Oh, all no. right. I want to thank everybody for <laughs> attending and chatting and all the questions and Tessa for your time. Yeah. That's a great way to end the chat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will be back in a, in a, we have a, a whole while. different sort of descriptions. Yes. <laughs> yes. More, more descriptions. <laughs> Very good. All right. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye. See you next time. Thank you.